everyone, my name is Diani Rivera. I'm 24 years old and I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I am currently an Eisenhower Youth Leader and this is my post one year experience. Growing up in North Philadelphia has given me the tools and experiences needed to be able to give back to the youth in my community. When I was younger, I grew up in a single parent home with my mother and my brother. My mother went to work full time and to school part time. My brother helped and took care of me when I was young up to the age of 14 when my mom finally finished her associate's degree. When I was in middle school in the North Philadelphia area, things that I've noticed was that we lived in a food desert and also an area that was in need of more, of more health care providers. Um, and when I enter into the stage of going into high school, I was exposed to something different outside of my community and it was a college preparatory school. So having those types of tools also made me realize that my area also did not have those type of resources. So it made me wonder how were these people ever to actually know of these different types of things if they don't reach out or the resources are not put into the community. So I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to be chosen to be going to a school outside of my community. But now I felt like I had the job to do to come back and give my community those types of resources. So with that being said, because I had positive influences and mentors throughout my middle school and high school career, I knew I wanted to go to college. I ended up attending the Pennsylvania State University where I obtained a bachelor's degree of science in biobehavioral health. Through that entire experience in college, it extremely opened my eyes to exactly, exactly what my neighborhood was dealing with, what the entire community was dealing with. Understanding everything from social determinants, from health, from food, from behaviors, from like the violence, everything that was happening, I started to really understand and put things together and the power of education and the power of like how this is going to help me be able to get a job or to even just start my own project and be able to give back to my community and what they deserve. One of the most important things to the future of work are the programs that we have here at Congresso. Today I have with me my supervisor. Ta-da! Uh, I'm Rosalina Munoz. I am currently a counselor at a high school in the school district of Philadelphia. So at Congresso, um, I was hired as the coordinator for a college and career readiness program called Bambi Film. So there we worked with um, students at two different schools um, who were in their junior year. That's where we kind of started. And um, we basically assisted them with anything that they needed to prepare for their post-secondary plan. So whether that was helping them update their resumes for when they want to go to work to um, helping them apply to colleges and signing up for their SATs, which I remember you did a lot yes, with yes, them. We've done a um, lot, a signing lot. up for their SATs uh, for them to just be prepared for after they graduate high school. Hi, my name is Keith Bailey. I'm the Director of Post-Secondary Services here at Congresso. So what was your vision and motive for these students that you are working with? Sure. Um, Philadelphia as a city has gotten significantly better at raising the high school graduation rate. However, um, if you look at the statistics around the six year college graduation rate for Latinos in Philadelphia, it's below, significantly below 20%, um, which is a big problem. Um, if you look at like, for example, the 19133 zip code here in Philadelphia, which is where Congresso is located, um, as of 2014, less than 2% of the population had an associate's degree or higher. So we wanted to look at how can we provide additional supports uh, and develop programming that would be designed to raise the college graduation rate and ensure that students would um, get past at least that first year of college, which is where we see the majority of our students, um, and the majority of students, I think, nationally drop out. So going back to the high school programs, what lessons have you learned? So I mean, one of the things that we identified and we had an opportunity to kind of redesign the program model based around outcomes that we wanted to do 
was, and I alluded to this earlier, you know, looking at where the students struggle is not necessarily with graduating high school, but from graduating and, and staying in college. So we took our Ambition program, retooled it, and created a, a, a cohort of college students that we had through high school and supported them with a case manager through their first year of college um, or university at schools here in the Philadelphia region. Um, so the case manager would work with them, combination of services on campus where she would go out on campus and provide academic support, resource support, life skills support, um, in some cases financial support with textbooks and transportation and those types of things. Would also regularly schedule meetings here and, and support them here through you know, studying nights and, and you know, um, academic support and financial aid support, um, as well as doing some work remotely utilizing technology. Um, and although it was a small cohort of about 15 students after the first year, I, I, we pulled some data together and looked at um, and measured what we did. And what we found was that the cohort of students that we had significantly outperformed their peers at the national level in terms of first year college students, and specifically first year African American and Latino college students, where our college retention rate was 15 to 20 points higher than the national average um, for Latino and African American students. Uh, looking at student academic outcomes were significantly higher um, than their peers. Uh, one of our students at Penn State University had a 3.7 GPA for uh, in her first year at Penn State, which you know I joked with her was significantly higher than my GPA my first year at Penn State. So we're taking that data and utilizing that to, to create some new program models um, and to do some ongoing support and we want to try and bring those programs to scale as we move forward. Your motive, like what was the goal what was the vision you wanted to see and the outcome of the students I mean I've been working with it with the youth for a long time so I've learned I learned a long time ago that um, everything is not gonna work out the way that you want you plan it to work out and all of your kids are not going to and the whatever program it is successfully there they may not intake all the information that you're providing them with to me if as long as it was one student who we helped like solidify a plan and cliche change their lives or something like that. That's what mattered to me. One kid. I've done this, been doing this work long enough now that I've actually had like multiple generations of families and students come through programs. I've had sons and daughters of former students and former clients um, who have been successful, and that's always encouraging to see. You know, I've had staff that that started with me, you know, as youth in programs that we have. Um, so being able to see long term um, that you're able to have an impact and to change people's lives uh, in a positive way is always um, encouraging. Hi, my name is Maritza Perez. I'm 18 years old. I was born in Aguascalientes, Mexico, and I came here four years ago. I went to Edison High School in North Philadelphia. I grew up in a house with both of my parents and two younger sisters. My dad was the only one that worked at home and my mom stayed at home taking care of us. High school was hard because I didn't know how to speak English and on top of that, the community was not as safe and secure and did not have many sources back in 2013. So what were your motivations while you were in high school? When I was in Edison High School, regardless of everything that was going on around my community, my motivation were my parents because I wanted to make them proud. Also my siblings because I know they were looking up to me and I did it for myself because I knew I had a goal in mind to go further in life. So while you were in high school and you had these goals in mind, who helped you? During after school hours, I was part of two congressional programs. One was Exito, which helped me with homework, volunteering, staying physically active, and working with other students. And during my senior year, I was part of Ambicion, which helped me with the college process where I met Ms. Diana Rivera. Since I was the first in my family to go to college, I didn't have anyone to guide me through the process until I found a program like Ambicion. The activities that were held in the program were about voting rights, mental health, resume building, and mock interviews. So what was the most thing that you liked about the program after your 
graduation of high school? What I really liked about the program was that they helped us throughout our first year in college by doing study sessions and providing us with transportation. Overall, with the Ambicion program, what did you end up learning or taking away from it? From this program, I obtained skills that I can utilize to help myself and others who are interested in receiving an education and gaining a career. What is life like now that you have graduated from high school? Well, currently I am attending the Pennsylvania State University. I'm in my second year majoring in psychological and social sciences. My GPA is a 3.8 out of a 4.0 scale. I am a member of LSO, which stands for Latino Student Organization. Throughout the summers, I give back to the community by helping with the youth camps at Penn State. Um, the major difference I have noticed between now and when I was in high school is the responsibilities we have, which I was prepared for by Ambicion before coming to college. What advice would you give the youth in your community today? My advice to the youth in my community is to stay focused, never let anyone influence their decisions, and keep working hard to achieve their goals. So I just want to say thank you for participating in our interview. This is Marissa Perez.